Let's all remain standing for a moment and let, let Ms. Baxter today know how much we truly appreciate her being with us today as she comes. Come on, let her know we love her. Praise the Lord. I'll just hold your arm down. Well, thank you, thank you. Come here, Sister. Come here, Sister. He's getting me tickled. That's, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Praise well, thank God. You. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. And amen. I'm really happy to be here, and I praise God to be here at your church. Amen. No, you're fine, Miss Baxter. You oh, go okay. Oh, I'm ready, huh? Yeah. You can be seated. Amen. Good morning. It's Palm Sunday. You know what that is? Right? A week before our Lord was crucified many, many years ago, that we could have life eternal through Jesus Christ the Lord. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, my name is Mary Kay Baxter. I live in uh, Florida, and I've been traveling 25 years, 128 nations telling the story about heaven and hell. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, appeared to me as a, a young housewife and a mother and a human form and told me my destiny. He told me a, a mandate that I had to do for him. He said there's a beginning and an end of life, and I want to teach you and train you as a seer and a prophetess. And it was just awesome. Uh, I know we, we don't have a whole lot of time this morning because a lot of you want to hear what I'm going to say about heaven. And I want to get all of the parts that's greatly important to you out to you this morning, okay? How many believe in heaven? Wow. Everybody in here, right? How many have had visions of heaven or dreams of heaven? Raise your hands. Wow, a lot of you. And so this morning, I'm just going to uh, talk to you and give you some scriptures on the supernatural. Now, in the book of Revelations, can we turn there, please? And I give honor to honors due. I give honor to the Lord Jesus Christ and especially Pastor Chris, his wife, and all the staff here. I know that God is God, and I felt his presence so strong when you were worshiping. Did you guys feel his presence? He's real. He, there's no invitation to God's uh, uh, copycats of God's spirit. How many know what I'm talking about? Now, I was born in Tennessee, not too far from here. So I grew up with a lot of you guys, a lot of hillbillies. How many hillbillies? <laughs> How many shout hallelujah? And God takes us, you know, and he turns us into his image more and more every day. And he's king over my life and my family. And to, today I count it a great honor to share with you some mysteries. I um, was eight years old when God spoke to me. And he called me then when I was eight. I didn't even know it was audible voice. And I ran to my mama. I said, Mom, I just heard a man tell me uh, he will um, make my name a household name. What's that mean? She said, well, God's going to do something with you unique in your lifetime, say close to the heart of Jesus. Yeah, and it was wonderful, I uh, am part Cherokee, and so I grew up on a farm, and God spoke to me at 12 years old in a church when the Holy Ghost was falling. And then he spoke to me again when I was uh, in my early teens, and then he began to talk to me and show me visions. I mean, open things like looking up here, just open. He would show me God's word in action. When you pray a prayer, you, sometimes you're, the, the prophet, out of his mouth comes words that turn into a sword. And that sword goes into your heart or your mind. And it's God's living word. It cuts to the marrow of the bone. God's word is what we're talking about. And this morning, you have to prepare for heaven. You cannot just say once saved, always saved children. Because if you live like the devil and you got saved when you were young and you served the devil, you can't expect to repent on your deathbed and fly off to heaven because you may not make it. You may not have time to repent. Really, guys, we got to get down to where the rubber and the road meet together. We have to realize we have to be an example 
to our loved ones, our family. We cannot live evil and do the things of the world and say, okay, I'm ready to go to heaven. That is not true. There are several lies Satan has told us, I'm going to explain to you this morning, that will help you, okay, with visions and revelations. So 1976, I had a visit from Jesus in a human form like looking at you guys. He appeared in a beam of light in my bedroom at 2 in the morning, and he had given me before the Bible, and he said, come and dine, the master's calling, come and dine. So Father, I welcome in your Holy Spirit right now to open up our hearts and minds to receive these revelations. Take the blindness from our minds, Lord Jesus, and our eyes that we can understand more about your mysteries. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'm going to go to the book of Revelations, chapter 4, and you can turn there. And afterwards, at the book table, I have written 12 books of the supernatural. I've written about the blood of the Lamb. I've written about prayer. I've, what I'm going to tell you today about heaven. This is what I'm going to be talking today about. When Jesus appeared to me, he told me that my destiny, my mandate, was to have dreams, visions, and revelations. And he would appear to me many times of my whole life, and he would take me on a journey in the Spirit of God. He said, you will be a seer, like the Old Testament. I'm raising you up as a seer. He said, you will see angels of different ranks. You will see in the realm of the supernatural. You will see heavens open, angels descending and ascending. You will see the throne of God. And you will come and go as I tell you to and be led of my spirit. I've been to 128 nations in the last 22 years. I've traveled so much, been so blessed of God to, to, to work with interpreters of four times a night of different languages. God wants us to know who he is. God wants us to know he loves every nationality all over the world. Not all white folks are going to heaven, okay? Not all Japanese are going to heaven. They're in heaven. They are nations of people of different nations in your own color. You're not a vapor of smoke when you go to heaven. You're, I'm going to know pastor. He's going to know me. We're going to go from place to place and see heaven. Heaven has waterfalls with diamonds in them. Heaven has, baby doll, has God's throne sometime up in the air like 25 feet with living water that's alive. The water will come out and take the form of a hand or arm and shake your hand as you walk by, by the throne of God. God is not a wimp. God is powerful. He is not a man that he should lie. In heaven, there's tears like this guy, solid gold with diamonds, big as your fish, children set in. Pianos 40 feet across. Four angels playing pianos, or one child. Eight-year-olds singing better than Beethoven, singing hallelujah, glory to the Lamb. Angels 12 feet tall, 10 feet tall, 8 feet tall, fall on the ground before the throne, screaming, praising God like he likes noise, okay? God loves noise. God is wild. There's a rainbow over the throne. Think of it. Listen. There's lightning bolts coming from the throne. Now, if pastor's preaching and lightning bolts come, you'd all run out the door, say the devil's in there, right? You would. God likes noise. And on each side of him are the holy beasts with, listen to this, they're 50 feet tall, fire comes out of the top of their head and the bottom of their feet, and they cry, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty. They have eyes, they have six wings apiece. And they praise Almighty God. Their eyes are big as our heads. And they blink. They're in the front of their wings. They spread their wings out. All you see is eyeballs looking at you. And the back. There's lions that walk in the streets in heaven. You hear me? Beautiful lions that will lay down by you. You can pet them on the top of the head. There's doves this wide that fly through waterfalls. And diamonds come all over their feathers. Every color rainbow of doves. Not just a white one. God has places for children to grow up. God has a place for the little aborted babies to grow up. Every soul that's been aborted, God has the angels bring it to him and he finishes it. Every baby you've ever lost, sweetheart, is in heaven. And they grow up and some of them will meet you at the gates of glory when you go to heaven. 
And if you die 100, 15 minutes of heaven, you look 28 and 33 years old. And your baby runs, God will leave some of the babies little, and then some of them grow up. But a lot of you, like you lost a baby at 20 and you're in your 80s or 90s, that the Lord has his power. He'll let that baby wait till you come to heaven and that baby will grow, will grow up with you. God has, listen, there's bakeries in heaven. How do you like that? God loves sweet child. We got to be careful, but he loves them. And, and you, you think about our God. Our God Many years ago, knew his destiny, he had to go to a cross. He had to be cut up, beat, mutilated for you and I to have life eternal. That the blood he shed, sweetheart. And I'm going to explain to you, because when I was in Tennessee, grew up, they never explained to us much about the blood, what the blood does. Right now, there's 25 angels in here. Their heads are almost to the ceiling. And they have a... They have different things. Some have scrolls. And when you gave an offering, they took up what you gave and the attitude you give it in. A cheerful giver, right? They take, they take, they're take, writing down now everything I'm saying. They wrote down the music. They wrote down the pastor's words. There's records kept right now as we're speaking. And when we're done, they fly to heaven. There's record rooms in heaven of teardrops. Record rooms, sweetheart, of... Uh, about your life, books of your life. And I'm gonna to explain to you what happens when you get born again. I'm gonna to read to you a little bit first here in Revelation. I'm gonna tell you, how many remember the first time you received Christ in your heart? How many remember, raise your hand. How many remember the first time God spoke to you? Raise your hands. How many of you have ever had dreams of Jesus appearing to you saying, wake up, I wanna show you something? See. See, this is important. This is real important. John, the revelator, was a mighty prophet of God. John saw things. John heard things. He was called the revelator. Here in the Revelations 4, it says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. He actually saw a door, like big as that, open up. And the Lord said, Come up higher. I want to show you these things that must be hereafter. So this tells me, in the book of Revelation, God is preparing us for the hereafter, right? Right, guys? And that's where we want to go. And he said, uh, and immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one set upon the throne. We're talking about heaven. We're going to talk about the journey to get there. Okay, guys? And I want you to understand God's not going to squash you like a bug if you make a mistake. He's going to pick you up and love you like that newborn baby we saw. And he's going to brush you off and say, come on, man, we can make it. This is our God. He's, he's not evil. Oh, hallelujah. And immediately I was in the spirit. Behold, a throne was set in heaven and one set on the throne. Now picture that. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sapphire stone, shiny and bright, powerful. Light comes from him like beams of lightning bolts and glory. The power of God is all across his stage. It shoots out in further. And as he's in this glory cloud, you see the outline of a man. His arms come out once in a while. You see the white sleeve and you see his big hands. He's huge. The throne of God is 25 miles high. And it comes down and goes up again. Different thrones in different parts of heaven. Different judgment seats. Different board meetings in heaven. Do you hear me? God is just like, he made earth like heaven, okay? He has board meetings with his elders about us. Oh, you better believe it, he does. And, and he says, look at what it looks like. Look what he looks like. Glory to the Lamb of God. I thank you, Father. Like an emerald. And around about the throne were what? 24 seats. Say, pastor's up here preaching. He's got 24 elders sitting and watching. Some of you elders are out there. And elders are very important to God. Now look what the elders do. Look at them. And upon the seats, I saw 24 elders sitting. They had bodies. They have bodies. They sit, they walk, they talk. They're not a vapor of smoke. They're real. And they're clothed. They got clothes on. And they're white remnant. And next, next thing, they have heads. They have crowns sitting on their heads with jewels in them. 
hear this? So you guys got to know, honey. I've heard other people say you're a vapor of smoke. You float here. No way. God is not a man that he should lie. He made us in his image. And he has a plan for every one of you to live forever with him. He loves you, honey, so much. He cares for your soul, honey, your body, your flesh. Every one of us in the last 15 years, we've been so hit with infirmities. Our legs, our head, our backs, our bellies, every part of us, the enemy shot arrows at us. Am I telling you the truth? Amen. Amen. My friend here with me, is uh, uh, she's cancer free. A year ago, she was in the cancer unit. God healed her. And we stop and we think of this God we serve. You got to know him like your best friend. You got to wake up and say, hey God, here I am today. What can I do for you? No matter if it's go over and tell a neighbor you love them. No matter if it's you go to the store and you go buy groceries for somebody. When God says it, you do it. Don't question it. It may be the craziest thing in the world. He may tell you to go out and get a walnut and plant that walnut. And you say, okay, God, I'll do it. And, and then two days later, he tells you why you planted the walnut. He says, it's a seed that trees of righteousness will grow up to me. Glory to his name. Look at this, guys. I love this. And out of the throne proceeded, verse 5, lightning, thunder, and voices. Now, can you imagine that? He really likes noise, don't he? And there were, look, he's seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. Oh, glory. And that's for the church. That's for you guys. Oh, my gosh. Oh, God. Hallelujah. It's for you. Wow. And beside the throne was a sea of glass like a trick crystal. In the midst of the throne, around about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. They had four faces. Verse 7. One looked like a lion. Now think about it. If you saw a 50-foot beast here, six wings, eyeballs, and, and look at this, with four heads, what would you do? <laughs> They're scary looking. God's got them. God has got this stuff. And you're, when you're up there, you're in awe. Oh, ah, what next, you know? Good Lord. You know, you kids, what you kids, I don't know if there's any kids in here, but if you're in heaven and you want to change your, your out, like you want to be a cowboy, you can look in the mirror and say, Lord, I want to be a cowboy today. All your clothes turn into the little hats and all that and boots. Yeah, and if you women want new hairdos, all you do is say, hey, I want a new hairstyle today. I want to look like a queen. Her hair has pearls in it. In any color you want. We don't have to have it bleached. <laughs> Isn't God good? We want to go to heaven, don't we? Glory. This is awesome. I love heaven. Now, we're going to look at the beast, the seven, number seven. Think about a lion, Pastor, with the face of a lion, and then a calf over here, and, and the face of a man, and then a flying eagle. That is weird, Bill. I know it represents revelations. I know it represents God's power, but that is wild looking, especially when the eagle looks at you and you're sitting there in the front like you guys and here's these four beasts and that eagle eye looks at you. What's the eagle represent? Jesus Christ, doesn't he? Right? You guys know that? He is wild. And then look at what he's doing. The first beast, like a lion, then a calf, Face of a man and a flying eagle. Now look at verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings around about him. They were full of eyes within and did not rest day or night and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is to come. All righty. Then verse 10. The 24 elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshipped him that lived forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. And he said, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Go with me to Revelations 19, chapter 19. And we're going to read a couple of verses here. In verse 11, I've seen this several times in visions. It's a white stallion. God has horses in heaven. They're four feet across. 
Their feet are almost this big. Oh, dear Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The horses come before the altar of God. They stand side by side in a row and bow down to God and worship God. Out of their mouth comes praises unto God. You guys never knew about that one, did you? There's also warring angels. I'll tell you about them in a minute. Warfare angels. That their faces are jaws of iron. They don't have normal faces. Flames come out of their eyes and their mouth. And on their side is a sword taller than you with flames shooting out of it. And it's to destroy demon powers. The blackness, honey. The, t- the terrors of night. They're, they're commissioned by God to come and do warfare for you. You know that? You call them in the book of Malachi. You ask God. They'll come. Because God will send them. And look at this. Let's read about our king coming back. It's supernatural. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. He that sat on him was called what? Faithful and true. Are you faithful and true this morning? Are you lying, cheating, stealing? You better not, because Jesus showed me hell three hours a night. I walked among the dead. Sections of the flesh they served on the earth is what they were judged by. Never repenting to God, thinking they were good, they were going to be happy. But they're burning in hell because they, they believed a lie and got deceived. They didn't read the holy word of God. Glory to his name. He was faithful, he was true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. Jesus is a man of war. He's not a wimp. He's not a fairy. Jesus is so big and powerful. You men, and you better believe he looks like he's worked out all his life. You women, his arms are so big around, his legs, his feet. He's power. He's never a wimp. And I hate that picture with him in a diaper. I hate it. Have you seen it? They sold that thing for $1 million. I met the artist. I couldn't believe it. You've never seen it? How many seen that picture? He looks like he got a donut, a diaper on. It's crazy, real skinny, and there's got a cross or something, and his mother's supposed to be doing something. The devil gets into a lot of junk. Do you hear me? And I don't care if you call me or rebuke me. I do not like that picture. He does not look like that at all. He, if they see the Son of God, the movie, The Son of God, he looks a lot like that picture, like the Son of God. And his eyes change color. He can change them to brown, to blue, whatever he wants. And look at this. His eyes was a flame of fire, verse 12. And on his head was many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. But he was clothed with a vesture dripped in blood. Listen to this. It was dripping in blood for you and I, sweetheart, to receive him as our Lord and Savior, get born again, and, and, and come away from going to hell. There's damnation in hell. There's souls burning and screaming tonight in hell that nobody even asked them to go to church. They blame us in hell for not inviting them to church. And they're all over hell by the millions, honey. And when Jesus showed me heaven, after he showed me hell, 10 nights I went to heaven, three hours a night. I was so relieved to see heaven because I understand now as a woman of God what salvation means. We must understand that God keeps records in heaven. When you are out there a sinner and we give an altar call, sweetheart, we say, come and give your life to God. God showed me a replay like a television show. And the people come up and they're bowing their little heads. And around them is all these black cords like on these machines. It's bound in sin. They, they're saying, oh, God, forgive me. I'm a liar. Oh, God. And the angels touch them and bust that band. They say, oh, God, I'm an alcoholic. They, the angels touch them and bust the bands. God showed me. And then when they're ready to give their heart to God, their heart's like a stone. The angels touch it and flames shoot through you. And your heart turns into flesh. And the angels write down everything you say in your heart or verbally, openly to God. And they take your book when all the service is done and that you need the Holy Ghost to keep you. You need the baptism, sweetheart. And then you, you, they take this to heaven. You go to heaven with the angels. You go down corridors, rooms. You go down a room that says storehouses, body parts. You go down another room that says a room of tears. You go down another room. It said every alphabet 
of the whole world, every nation, every language. There's record rooms of your, your life. Everybody ever born, there's one angel that's got thousands of eyes that keeps records of your, your birth and your death. And they're recorded in heaven. This is not done in a corner. And as you're with God, you're going to this room. You see like a large uh, library room. It's like a, you go get a book. And there's an angel sitting up here with a golden helmet on. He's got big wings. And he's sitting there at this long gold desk carved out. Most beautiful hand carving. And in front of him is a row of people with books in their hands. And they're talking. And they said, we just came from earth. This is a book of somebody just got born again. And they're standing in line, but they're not reading the book. But they have a slip of paper where they wrote down when you got born again. And they're waiting in this long line. So we get in the line, me and an angel. And the big angel looks and he tells us like this to come. And we move, not, like on an escalator, moved. And we came up by him. And he looked at me and he said, Child, you're here to let the world know what we do when somebody gets born again. You're here that they can understand about salvation. And he said, and the angel gave, he gave him a man's book that I had seen get saved. Oh, hallelujah. And the angel takes the book and he takes the scroll from the angel and he says, you can't see this part of the book. We, you're not allowed of that man's sins. And he said, now here's what we do. There's two angels come in the front, and he begins to question them. He says, you are witnesses that this, this man received Jesus Christ according to your report at this church this time, this day. And they said, yes, we were there. And when the two agreed and the angel, he wrote something down in a book. And he turned to me, and he said, Can you, we'll show you what we do with the sins that the people have done. We're going to show you how God, they're blotted out all their old transgressions. And he turned around, there was angels all in the back, sitting around with gold buckets. And, he, and I'm thinking, I wonder if his wings are real. They're huge. And he's got his arms here. And he looks at me and said, would you like to feel the gristle that goes in my back to prove my wings are real? I said, yes. So he let me do that, and he moved them, and he smiled. He said, now tell the world what we're doing up here. So I go back with the angels, and they take this man's book. It's very thick, and they take a cloth out of that bucket, and they blot every page in crimson red. All your old writings of your past life is truly washed away. Nothing is left, sweetheart. Not even, not even a drop of their old writings. Everything turned. They take their time. And they sing, oh, Lord, nothing but the blood of Jesus will wash my sins away. Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus will make me whole today. They weep. They cry. The angels cry. And they wash those pages because it was the blood that paid for your sins to be washed away. That's in the Old Testament. You preachers know that. He said, I even I blot out all your old transgressions. It's written. It's written. And then, the, then that book, I got to go with them after they got done with stacks of books before the throne of God. I came in on this side, excuse me. Well, the throne of God. And there's that big throne in the air, but it comes down. And somehow God, everything comes down to I level where I'm at, then it gets bigger. It's, it's wild what God could do. And then the angel comes, there's an uh, altar there, and the angel, he's a men angels, okay? they all got all kind of outfits on. There's women angels, there's no gender, but they're real. The women, they all have orders from the Lord. They all work in harmony, and they work in unity. There's no strife in heaven, no wheelchairs in heaven, no evil in heaven. God is real. And then they bring the book and lay it and bow backwards, the angels. And a big hand comes out of that cloud, like I read you in Revelation, and he picks up the book, and all he sees is his son's blood. He said, I see another one's been redeemed by my son's blood. I see another one, their sins have been washed away by my son's blood. 
He said, there'll never be another Jesus. He is the only way. He is the truth, the word, the life. And he said, and uh, God preaches about his son, boy. And then, then he says, and people are shouting, the redeemed are there, the angels are sitting, thousands of them. And then he preaches. And then God, audible voice speaks in many waters, and I understood every bit of it, what he was preaching. I could hear it. And all, of, all this like living water, but it was God's voice in the language I understood. And the person out there might have been Chinese. They understood it in their language. Isn't that wild? I mean, look at God. He's so perfect. Amen. And so then the, the Lord has the Lamb's Book of Life brought to him on the altar. And God himself writes your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And he told him, take the book back to the record rooms and everything they do for my son, record it. Whew, glory to God. Whoo, oh, mercy. Everything they do for my son, record it. And then the, the, uh, the Lord, uh, I went back with the angel to the room to take the book back. And the angel said, tell the people that if they sin, to repent quickly. And it, and it, it, will, it will be blotted out. Tell them to remember to repent daily by the blood of Jesus. That's what he said. He said that he keeps good records. So, you know, a lot of us fall down sometimes. But don't think you're going to, you know, if you don't give, don't give up, guys, if you fall. Please don't give up. Because you live in a real world with a lot of sin, honey. We are really in a time that prophets spoke about, what, 30 years ago, 50 years ago, what we're going to go through today. Every kind of God is preached. Nobody, a lot of people don't have the fear of God anymore. You know, they don't have a fear to serve him. They love him. you got to love him again. Teachings, I've been to California a lot. Oh, my God. The young kids don't know who Jesus is. They think he's some kind of genie in a bottle. The young kids, they cry, they weep when I come to my services. And they just draw from me and draw me to tell them the truth. They said, oh, my God, Mary, Mary we don't want to go to hell. Please help us. Because they were following every kind of, of God there was, but not the true God. And they, it's so simple. You really got to repent, darlings, every day. Because what if you men see a car run you off the road? I bet everything in the world comes out of your mouth. And meet women too. So you got to repent immediately. Oh, God, I'm sorry. You know, that's the flesh. Okay, understand. And it happens. So what God wants you to do is get in an attitude of walking every day with him like a best friend. And if you fall flat on your face, you come off of drugs. And two weeks later... Put your friends take you to the drug house and you fall flat again. Listen, guys, you need the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost will keep you. It will keep you. The Holy Ghost is the... Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost is. I saw him in heaven. There was the, the, Jesus was on the right hand. The God was in the middle, but it was all glory. And the Holy Ghost was over here. The Holy Ghost is a man, but he's power. He's power. He looks... You see that little guy, and they don't laugh at me, but the t tire commercial, the little big white little guy, t picture somebody 100 feet tall like that. A wool of power shooting in and out of him. That's the holy power. And, and here's what God showed me. He said, now there's Jesus, there's me, and there's the Holy Ghost. He said, then they go in together, and they're one, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the Trinity. We believe in the Trinity. It's real. It's real. Because you get in trouble and you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you start going, -na 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 the power of God shoots out of your mouth and the devils flee. Your baby's about to die and you go, -na 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 you pray for hours on your face, your baby lives. The power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit will guide you. He will tell you, hey, he, he forewarns you of danger if you'll listen. It's not that he wants to scare you. My kids, when they were little, I have three sons and a, a daughter and a lot of spiritual children. They, when they were little, they would, I'd say, I don't know why I'm supposed to tell you kids this, but if you're going to go with your friends where you shouldn't go, they'll be inside your gut feeling, don't go, don't go. How, how many times you felt that? And they, even as little, they learned that. I have one son that was a Navy SEAL. I have a, a, we have a lot of Army in our family, military. Uh, my 
sister's girl, Amy, is an Air Force pilot and dropped bombs on Afghanistan. We have many in the family that's from the military. And, and they, t they teach them in the service the danger of the enemy. Do you understand? Emily's been in the military in here. Raise your hand. Remember how they teach you about the, the well, you, you know, if you were in the real army, you get out there on the front lines, they get hit first. And that's us leaders. We get hit first. We protect you through prayer and travail. Am I right? Right, guys? But when you get the Holy Ghost, he is so powerful, the devils tremble. God showed me in heaven the name of Jesus alone. Demons run 25 feet from you. The blood of Jesus, when you say, oh God, I believe in the blood, there's a red power that flows down over you. And the demons run and scream from the blood of the lamb. I have friends, Earthquake Kelly, a fighter, he used to fight with Tyson in California. He saw hell. He said he didn't need no drug rehab. He didn't need no hands laid on him. He run down the streets screaming, my God, deliver me from the power of the devil. And God delivered that man from being a, a warlock and a voodoo king. Listen to me, God can do anything. We got to know this God we serve. He's got a heaven above us, babies. Honey, I'm not afraid to say it. You cannot live like the devil, darling, and beat your wife or beat your kids or vice versa, women. You got to get it together. You got to say, God, I'm a devil. Forgive me and cleanse me, cleanse me, God. Don't lie. God knows that heart. How many, and I'm from Tennessee. I used to throw lamps at my husband. And I'd take an iron skillet after him, man. You know we're full of the devil sometimes. And I did, Pastor Chris. I said, oh, man, I was awful. And <laughs> so God got a hold of me, boy, ever. Yeah. He showed me a picture of me one time, guys, and I had a motorcycle helmet on. He said, your head is as hard as that motorcycle helmet. And he said, when are you going to listen to me? And boy, he really got me. Yeah, I was stubborn, and I, well, he got me good. And uh, he gets you in them places, but you got to listen to him. Oh, yeah. I used to think that if anybody had a beer, they were going to go straight to hell. So my husband would bring all the guys home from work, and I'd run them all off with the Bible. I'd grab the Bible, and I'd look up, look up. You that put a bottle uh, to the lips of somebody. And I'd say, okay, guys, everybody put them bottles down. I was awful. I run them all off. And <laughs> I did, you know, I, did, I just did what the old time religion told me. Now, I'm not saying to go out and have a drink or what that is. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, though, you can get stuck in a position where you're critical instead of the love of God to break that stronghold. Do you understand? I used to believe if you wore parted garments, you would go to hell. Do you know what parted garments are? They're pants. <laughs> Do you know what mixed bathing is, God? You God don't know. If you and your husband go swimming together, you're mixed bathing. You're going to go to hell. <laughs> you never heard none of that? How do you got to be truthful? How many's heard that teaching? See? Yeah, and, and there was nobody in hell for mixed bathing. Nobody was, in, nobody was in hell for wearing jewelry. Nobody was in hell for wearing lipstick. I broke every rule, man. One time we were going to go see Richard Brother Hall, you know, and my husband had bought me a real pretty dress, and I had bleached my hair, and I couldn't get it down. It would look like a, that doll you paint the cheeks and the hair. I was awful looking, and I put on a pair of pantyhose, and all these holier-than-thou people, they picked me up in a van. And all of them, even the kids, pulled away from me. They said, you look like a painted doll. And they had no makeup. They looked like dead corpses. And I went to that big old meeting in Orlando. I'll never forget it. And he said, God didn't paint little red apples. He pointed right at me. And I said, oh, God, I wish I could get this rouge off my cheeks. It would not come off. And that dress was pink, and for some it kept blowing up. And I, I kept, it was a big circle. And I said, oh, God. And all my holes got runners in them. And I, <laughs> I said, oh, God. I said, what's happening to me? He said, you're a sign and a wonder. <laughs> oh, I've got in more trouble. God, 
I went to preach in Chicago, and I told people I'd preach anywhere, you know. So this pastor, uh, one of them was my friend, but his father wanted me to come, so I went. And they put me in the old hotel that your feet stuck to the floor, red roof in. And I said, oh, God, do I got to do this to preach the gospel? So he picked me up in a big limo for church. I said, oh, they got a nice car, you know. So we go to, he drives around the side of this place. And I, I smelt death. Yeah, I smelled it. And I thought, oh, God, how many dead people in here? And I'm just thinking, you know, because I'm young in the ministry. And I'm thinking, oh, God. So we go in the front door, and all these little kids are sitting with their eyes real big. And I spoke to them. They wouldn't speak to me. And then I smelt the odor of death. I turned to the pastor. I said, this is a funeral home. He said, yep, we rented it for you to preach today. He said, you said you'd go anywhere and preach. I said, in a funeral home, how many dead corpses are in the back? He said, well, two or three. I said, Pastor, hey, you're going to get it, man, I said. And he said, he, he said, come on, we'll show you the front. You know where the caskets roll in? It was worn out carpet. That's where they had my bullpen. And I, <laughs> and I thought, God, what you going to do with this guy? I said, I ain't going to preach. I'm going to be stubborn. And... <laughs> All it was, John Eckhart's church. It was not John Eckhart. This was not John Eckhart's church. And one of the prophets from John Eckhart is a good friend of mine. He comes in the back, and I'm sitting up there screaming, smelling the dead. I'm saying, oh, God. And I'm ready to get up and walk out. And uh, he comes in the back and waves at me. I thought, oh, boy, I'm glad he's here. And, and there was only like 100 people, but they were dressed to kill, you know. They had the fancy hats, the dresses, the shoes. Uh, every nationality was, was there. And I have a lot of Af African-American friends. I love them. We have a lot of fun together. And some of them were on the front row like froze, you know. I said, God, they've scared my friends. And so <laughs> it was wild. So I'm up here, you know, and I said, where's the bathroom? They said, downstairs. I said, in the morgue department? So, oh, God, it was hilarious. So anyway, he got up there, and he's, he's strutting around and talking, you know. And I said, I wish he'd shut up, God. And so, <laughs> so all at once, the prophet, I looked back at him, and all heaven opened up because I was really upset. And my flesh was acted up, and all, and all heaven opened up. And I saw Jesus on a white stallion. He grabbed a, like a scroll and started flying on a horse. He had wings, a horse did, all the way down to the prophet. He walked in the prophet, and the prophet stood up. You talk about him preaching. He preached hellfire and brimstone from the back of the church, around the church, here in the church. Everybody fell out, rolled in the floor. God filled people's teeth with gold, silver, and platinum. All their hats fell off, their wigs fell off. And all I did was sit there and laugh. And I said, that man, better not do that to nobody else because putting you in that stinky old place. And I said, Lord Jesus. And the prophet come up to me and he prophesied about my future. And all I could see was the eyes of Jesus looking at me in that prophet. And when I met Pastor Chris, his eyes turned pure blue and I'd never told him. I saw Jesus in him, so strong. Yeah, his eyes turned blue. I don't even know what, are they hazel blue? They turn real blue like your shirt. And I'm thinking, boy, I know this is Jesus bringing me here. So you live, you live and you learn, guys, okay? Even you've got to preach in a funeral home. <laughs> yeah. They said they had no churches. So they rented the chapel, called it a chapel. And needless to say, God really worked, though. We had a case of cassettes we gave away to a man that came. I just gave him the whole hundred of them. I said, go give them away to the street people, wherever. And we got a letter later on from one of the women there. She said that that uh, man's bro son, or, or wait a minute, I'm sorry, I better get it straight. His... Um, brother had been killed in Chicago at 13 years old and he was angry so he was going to go rob a place and kill the people and the lady had the little window down and she shoved uh, one of my cassette sets to him through the window and it said hell on it 
It was a set. I used to have them in sets. And he shoved it through that little hole, and he grabbed it, and he started shaking. And he took off with it. And later he called and told her that he got born again by listening to the hell tape. And things like that are so remarkable, honey. So God don't waste anything. And when I was in heaven, I saw how prayers are answered. Your prayers are brought up to God by angels. And also they turn into uh, your praises, turn into flowers. And they pick up bowls of them. And pour them up on in a glory thing, a glory. I don't understand it. But they pour it like a, the glory of God. They put that in there, pour the flowers in there. And it becomes a sweet smell and savor to God. And my friend Richard Sing Sigmund saw a tree, a crystal tree, with fire coming through the roots and the branches 100 feet high, miles, 100 miles high. The branches 100 miles this way and that way. And all the redeemed are under their praise in God. And when, when a, a person dies and go to heaven, you go through a process. If you don't know the Lord, you go to school in heaven. I mean, if you just get saved on your deathbed. You have to go to school in heaven. Do you know that? You'll be going to school. You like that? They have pedestals of Bibles. And it, but when you die, here's what he showed me. That man died that man that I told you about earlier where he wrote his name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. He died three days later. And the Lord showed him to me how when he died. He was laying on his couch. He had a heart attack and he grabbed his chest and he died. And a vapor of smoke come out of him and stood by his body and made the outline of a man. And the angels was there and they said <clears throat> according to our report you got born again three days ago. And said we're here to escort you to heaven. And there you'll get a new body. And, and said, because you didn't know much about Jesus, you will go to school and have fun. And the angels are carrying him through the sky, and we follow him through another doorway in heaven. And the angel said to me, that was my guide, he said, now we're going to show you what we do. There's different ways people come to heaven. He said, some of them that are leaders, pastors, and and and, and Great evangelists, there's halls of fame with your names and pictures on them. But he said if there's special robes for them and special gifts for them when they come to heaven. And they come up through a porthole, like an open light beam, and Jesus meets them and dances with them on that sea of glass. And they put a robe in the crown on them, Jesus does. And... and um, 15 minutes, they look 29 or 30 years old. The patriots in heaven have a strong look. You know them, like Moses and Abraham and all them. But when you go to heaven, you die, and you just got saved, born again, darling. The angels take you to the river of life. And there in the river of life, people walk through the water. They float on the water. You cannot drown. There's no law of death in heaven. So when you, they take them through the river of life, and when they come out on the other side of the river, their family are shouting and praising, Hallelujah, you made it. Hallelujah, you're here with us. And then they come back around, and they're like an invisible outline of a person. They're, I don't know how to tell it to you. It's kind of like the old-time cameras when you take the, negative, the picture apart, and there it's like a white outline of a person. You remember those? The new technology and everything's wild, but anyway, you look like that. And then they take you to the, all these rooms. One is a room of crowns. One's a room of gowns. One is a room where the angels do something to you. And every one of them are open. The doors are archwayed and open. So they took this man first to the room of, of I think, gowns. And when he went in there, the angels was playing with him, and they said, you have to go stand before God. We're going to dress you to go before the king. And they kept saying, he said, well, I was a bad old rascal. And they said, according to this report, you've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And yet, this is very important. What I want to tell you that you'll love it. And so he kind of, they got him tickled. They tickled him. I didn't even know how they did it, but he started laughing. And when he came out, he, you could begin to see the outline of a man's face. Then they took him to the other room and all these crowns 
king's crown, but it was a crown of salvation. No jewels was in it. But the crown alone was probably worth a half a million dollars on the earth price. Solid gold. And they tried little bitty crowns on him. It was way too little. They tried big ones that come on his shoulders. They had to push it off with their feet. They had this man having fun with this man. And he kept saying, what are you doing to me? I only know Jesus three days. And they said, don't worry. There's no worries in heaven. There's none of that. And so then the next room he goes to, they did something. I don't know what they did. But when they brought him out, he was solid looking. He looked like a human being, but a lot younger when he, than when he was. He was about 80, I guess. And they took him uh, to the, again to the throne on this side, brought him before that big glory like in Revelations 4. And they brought him before the throne of God. They had to hold him up. And in Revelations, we're going to go to chapter 21, and this is what God said. They hold this man up before the throne, and there's a, a angel brings a tray with his crown on it. Hallelujah. Chapter 21, verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now, this was powerful. The man was crying. And God's arm come out of that cloud and wiped his tears away. He said, and verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And God said, There'll be no more death here. Glory to God. There'll be there'll neither sorrow. Glory. Do you feel the Lord? We're not going to have sorrow, darling nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And then he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Now, Pastor Chris, when he said that, his hand came out on the top of his head, fire shot into his head, and beams of light like lightning, and his mind was transformed. It was wild. It was wild. When he put the crown on God's hand, went on top of the crown, and he blessed him. Oh, glory to God. And he, wow. And he that sat upon the throne, verse 5, I make all things new. And he said unto me, write, for these words are true and faithful. Oh, he did, and in verse 6, he said to, to, unto me, it is done. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, honey, and, and the fearful are those that's not being afraid of the dark. It's afraid to tell people you're born again. And unbelievers, if you don't believe the gospel, God gave his blood, his son, to have us believe. We must believe the word of God and read it. And, and look at the abominables. There's people wicked today, babies, that actually kill little children. There's people wicked today that's probably a few of them here today that's in the occult. Honey, you will go to hell for sure if you don't repent. You've got to repent, baby doll. You cannot continue in that darkness because Satan's deceived you, honey. There was a place in hell 17 miles high full of jail cells with witches and warlock souls in them. Satan himself would appear there and flow flames on them, and they would scream, you promised us the kingdom. He said, I hate you as much as Christians. This is your kingdom hell. It's real, guys. It's not a fairy tale. And then the Lord says this, verse 8, the abominals. That's the abominals, all that weakness. Hallelujah. And, and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers. And idolaters, that's when we worship other gods. We fall down to idolatry. And all liars, look at that. You've been lying a lot, you better quit. I'm serious. You, there's a place in hell where millions are burning that are liars. In hell, sweetheart, there's sections like a human body. And if this was a work of your flesh over here to lie all your life, you go with the liars, no matter what nation you're from. If you were a thief, you go with the thieves. If you were a uh, murderer, you go with the murderers of every nation. And you look out over the masses of souls. Jesus walked me through hell. We sat on rocks. We cried together. He, he, real blood would come out of his feet and his hands. 
and it would disappear. And he said, I did this so they wouldn't come here. Warn them of that eternal damnation. Tell them to repent. I love them. Satan has blinded their minds and closed their eyes. They have eyes to see and ears to hear, but they don't hear. Too much watered-down doctrine, have you heard? Too much watered-down gospel baby dolls. We got families we got to pray for. We got to get them back. You got to travail for your families. And that's what Jesus is telling here. And all lives have their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone. Are you guys listening to this? That's for eternity. There's no exits in hell. There's no way out, baby doll. There's no way you can go like here. You burn and you burn and you suffer and worms crawling through you. If you die with cancer, you have cancer 10 times stronger. If you die with arm missing, you don't have an arm in hell. Skeletons screaming, warn my family. Tell my people of this awful place. 50 years, 100 years, one woman been there 3,000 years from the law of Moses. A witch. Hell is real. And that's why pastor brought me here. To tell my stories of revelations of heaven and hell. That you would have an uh, understanding more. A lot of you are born again. But some of us, sweetheart, the Holy Spirit saying you need to repent. You need to shake off right here on this Palm Sunday. Shake off those old garments, sweetheart. And I just feel the Holy Ghost is wanting to move and save. Can we begin to pray? Well, he said we'll have our part. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. That's the second death, darling. Be thrown into a lake of fire and you'll burn for eternity. That's what it says that the prophets would look over. Wow. Wow, Father, we thank you. There's a time, God said, out there on my table, many books of different things that God showed and told me. But right now, bow your heads and let's listen. When the spirit of the king comes in, he speaks to your heart, darling. The devil will never tell you to get up and come down here and pray. The devil will never tell you, baby, you must be born again. His job is to stop us from receiving Christ. So let's, we have a little music. The children can come and play. I'm going to give an altar call this morning. And I want to talk to you with your heads bowed. What if that was you burning in hell? What if that was you that played around for years and thought you're okay? I got saved at 10. I died. At, I'm going to die at 50 and go to heaven. Sweetheart, we got to get real. I'm telling you from my heart, God is real. He has a place of heaven for us, honey, where we never die, baby doll. You never die in hell either. The eternal soul belongs to God. You have a body, soul, and spirit. And today he's dealing with your hearts, honey. So right now we're going to invite in the, the presence of God to bring Holy Ghost conviction. Father, in Jesus' name, as we worship you and praise you for a moment, let your Holy Spirit deal with our hearts, God. Father, we love you, and we've got to make it real with you today. It's Palm Sunday. We don't know. We've all lost loved ones, God. We've been through a lot of battles, but today is your day. Come while the Holy Spirit is drawing you. Come, Holy Ghost. Come, Holy Ghost, bring holy power upon your precious people. Wow, at any time, oh wow, you feel led to come down and kneel at this altar, come. Come and bow before the Lord. If you want to stand up, stand up. If you want to stay seated, stay seated. But let God deal with your little heart this morning. You must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. You cannot jump up, fly up. You've got to be born again. You've got to ask Christ in your heart. Can we hear what the Spirit is saying? If he's knocking on your heart, sweetheart, and you feel fire, you're nervous, shaking, you get up and come down to this altar and get receive Christ today. Pastor has great ushers, great people. 
I, he wants to win you to him. God bless you, honey. Come on down. See, this is a time maybe some of you want to rededicate your lives. You need to come while the Spirit's drawing you. He's saying, come. Wow. There's 20 people in here. God says, come on and you come down and make your peace with him today. You've been so troubled. Your money's going through your fingers like water. God has called you, sweetheart. And you're running from him. You really are. And there's a great pastor here, a great church would help you, baby doll. And I plead with you to come down and give your heart to the Lord today. We can't make you. It's your decision. And you have bless your heart. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. And you know, little children, you come to you. Teenagers, young people. And God wants to use you. God wants to raise up the young people. God wants to bless you, darling. Wow. Holy Spirit. You have a song you want to sing, hon? Wow. Come. Don't put off tomorrow and say, I'll get saved tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come. Come quick. Oh, yes, Father. This is serious. It's a time that we search our hearts. Sweetheart, it's a time that we hear what the Spirit is saying. If you want to live eternity with God, honey, come while the Holy Ghost is drawing you. Don't be embarrassed or pride. We all had to come this way. We ministers had to lay our flesh down. Oh, yeah, we didn't, we didn't, the Lord wouldn't deal with us. Come. While he's dealing with you, it's easier. Okay. There's some young people, too, here today. You've just been wandering from one place to another. And God said, make your peace with him today. And let his Holy Spirit fall and deal with your precious heart. God loves you, darling. He loves you so much. So I just want you to know he's here. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. Anytime you feel the Lord like your heart's pounding, that's God saying, come on, I'm knocking on your heart. And come down to these altars. Pastor has people to pray for you. Wow. Jesus. How many how many times God said have I called you and I've called you? How many times have I sent my prophets and apostles amongst you? And when my spirit pulls you so gentle, for I love you so much. My spirit's tugging at your hearts today. Intercessors, pray softly. There's like 30 people you need to come down. You're afraid of what your neighbor will say. Sweetheart, don't, you could, on judgment day, you ain't going to care what anybody says. His Holy Ghost is real. And we need you to come. Look at these precious people. Father, we thank you for your love. Wow. Come while the Holy Ghost is drawing you, darling. Ooh. Sir, I feel the power of God on this man here. Praise Pastor Chris. You want to come up and help me? Keep praying. What do you know? What if it was you, baby dolls, in hell? And you're wondering, oh my God, why didn't I come to the altar and that lady called to repent you of your sins? Pastor Greg. 